know what I mean? Welcome to Ernest Roulette, the only Ernest podcast with a wheel. Ernest goes to school. Welcome back to Ernest Roulette, episode seven. The wheel has landed on Ernest Goes to School. We're coming to you on tape from Jurassic Sound and Light in Weymouth, Massachusetts. We're going to talk about Ernest Goes to School, which came out in 1994. Guess who directed this one? John Cherry. Wrong! It's Coke Sams. Oh! oh the guy who that. may or may not exist, right? Yeah, he, he's probably real. He's probably real, but like, is that really his name? Coke Sams. Or is that like his job? I don't know. I don't know. It was, wasn't directed by John Cherry. Neil, you have hosting privileges for this episode. Sure. That means I watched the movie and <laughs> tried to take notes that also include the plot points so we don't get lost like we did on a, on the Christmas episode. Yeah. And this movie, I'd say, is a little less meandering than certain previous movies, right? There's a clear escalation. Yes. It follows the three-act structure pretty pretty cleanly. It's a genre movie about a character going to school, or more importantly, back to school. Yeah. Like the 1986 film starring Ronnie Dangerfield and Kurt Vonnegut, Back, back to, to school. school. A one, two, three, four. The through line is stronger. It's more interesting looking than Ernest Rides Again. Definitely not as good as Jail or... Scared Stupid. Yeah, or even Christmas. I think this was going to be... In theaters, it was advertised as such at the end of Rides Again, the previous right. film. It's my new movie, Ernest Goes to School. It feels a little more ready for home video than the previous movie. I'm going to give it a few points just for cheering me up after Rides Again. Yes, um, me too. It is still, it has a lot of problems. It, it does weird things with the Ernest character, but kind of at this point, I think we're off the rails with Ernest anyway. I don't hold it against them for putting Ernest in a really new situation. You would think that it would be more Ernest and kids stuff, but right off the bat, I want to say, I don't think there's a single actor in this under 25, right? Um, that sounds about right. Yeah. The, the, the kids playing the high school kids, they all look pretty, pretty old. In I their think. 20s at least. And yeah. They can work 10, 12 hour days without exactly. any SAG issues coming up. Where does this take place? Where do we put it on the old Ernest map? Well, it takes place in Chickasaw... Was it, uh, hang on. <laughs> I wrote it down. That's a great question, because while Neil is looking for that, after doing a bit of research myself through the usual suspects, Wikipedia, IMDb, mm -hmm. and the actual context in the film, I don't know what state this takes place in. I, I believe it's Oklahoma. I'm going to put it in Oklahoma, because the Chickasaw people there mostly live in Oklahoma, I believe. The, the indigenous Chickasaw people who nation. are... Nation. Okay. Nation, yes, who are a real tribe, and not the, uh, what was the... Oh, the St. Clouds are from a nation whose name I don't remember right now. Uh, well, they're not real, so it's okay if we forget their name. <laughs> Ernest Trivia! Chickasaw Falls, although a fictional town, was previously used in one episode of Lost in Space, where they go back in time, and uh, one of the towns they go to is called Chickasaw Falls, so I think... Uh, <laughs> takes place in the Lost in Space universe. Anyway, in this film, Ernest, and let's get up the Ernest job map while we're at it, Ernest is a janitor at a school. Yes. He's definitely employed in this movie. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> but not for long because, um, although he is well-liked, I guess, by by the principal of the school, the is he the superintendent or just on the school board or something? I, he's a, definitely a G-man. He's the Walter Peck of these movies. He, His name is Axwell. A yes. yes, yes. And Principal Axe. Proctor. <laughs> and Principal Proctor. <laughs> and uh, he just has it out for Ernest, and it's like he institutes this new rule specifically to fuck over Ernest. It is just him. Yeah, and it's uh, all faculty or employees of the school must have a high school diploma. Or, or what? Or you have to go. So That's the that. principal cuts a deal with him and says, you can... Uh, how long do you think this movie takes place? He's not doing the whole four school weeks. year. Yeah, it's just four weeks. That's about right. So he's just kind of finishing up high school, which he never did. Four weeks? to f Okay. <laughs> well, is maybe maybe that's all he did. Maybe he dropped out like four weeks before. They never establish how much education Ernest P. Worrell had before he had to, you know, Billy Madison and go back to school. Mm -hmm. that, that's never established. Neil, you got your GED. How long did it really take? Not very long. Four weeks? No. Longer? 
I'm, I'm not to toot my own horn here, but I think I just studied like for a week or so before sure, I took sure. the GED test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right off the bat, no opening credits, no title sequence. They're just, uh, they're just like doing crane shots over the school. There's no creative, um, you know, title sequencing or anything. We, we establish that the football team is uh, kind of, they're bullies, mm -hmm. and that the marching band is not very good and falling apart. Yep. And we get to our first real sighting of Ernest. Yeah, he's first carrying his preposterous, ridiculous, put together cart of tools and supplies and things. He always then, seems to have some wacky invention or something. Yes. Went from a pickup truck and rides again to like, like a red wagon in this one. <laughs> we, we learn that the uh, band isn't good, that the marching band isn't good. The marching yep. band teacher quits, actually, in the opening titles. Yep. Oh, I missed he that He breaks somehow. his baton. Uh, yep. Well, they did not skip on extras in this movie. There's a ton of students just roaming around, and it looks very busy, and, like, they don't look like kids, but... It's a it's a bustling high school to the point where I almost thought like is this college for a second because it felt I like a big that a campus. Lot of yeah. times. There's a a super weird gag or it's not a weird gag but it's it is a hyper reality gag where Ernest gets trampled by all the football players. But I'm cutting it some slack because it's actually an impressive in shot. Camera. It's a good yeah. in camera effect. It's an shot. in camera stunt and what happens is they trample Ernest. You see Ernest, it's definitely him. And then a few seconds later, the camera pans down, and there's this flattened dummy of Ernest, but his real face is poking through, so he must be hiding under some sort of false floor. And there's, yeah. no, there's no cut. I rewound it a few times. There's no jump cut. There's no, like, frame blending or anything. It's just Jim Varney went off camera, got under the mat, put his face up, and then the camera tilted down towards More him. than that, they put uh, cleat makeup on his face, so they put a little yes. bit of, yeah, so it was actually and like- Lots and lots of high school football players, or high school. <laughs> Football players are running by through this one continuous shot. Yeah. So they did a really quick, just duck under there, put some makeup on your face, and then they pan down, and he's just, Ugh, and he's got the, you know, the mask Jim Carrey flattened, but without any CGI. Yeah. And I was like, all right, just, that's good. Good for you. You know, the opening sequence of Goes to Jail and Rides Again is Ernest being attacked by inanimate objects. Yes. They kind of do that a third time in this. And it's better than Rides Again because they, I think they built this little bathroom set that they were able to destroy and get super wet. Mm -hmm. And it's just Ernest uh, kind of just playing this unwinnable game with all the pipes and toilets and trying to get everything in place. It's more Ernest goes to jail. And even though the Ernest Rides Again bit where he's trying to negotiate his way out of getting hurt by the saw is funny in a way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong. Yeah. Like, it's a funny moment in a trailer, but in the movie it doesn't work. Here, just watching Ernest, like, like try to, like, manpower his way through, like, a busted pipe, like, hosing him down, it's funny to watch. And there's good visual gags, like, uh, like the toilet shoots up <laughs> underneath him, and you just see a jet of water with his hat. It's like a Mario 64 <laughs> bit. For, sure, yeah. but so it also <laughs> kind of implies, like, the water's going up through his ass and out of his <laughs> mouth and just, like, making I didn't think float. that, but now I, I thought it. It comes up later when the principal has to fire Ernest. Uh -huh. He's like, uh, Ernest, come in here. I have to to talk to you and he goes oh if it's about the toilet don't worry I took care, <laughs> I took care of it it's presumed by the end of the film it's the, it's just gushing water it's still a mess all and there is a point where I thought as an adult I honestly thought to myself you just need to find the water shut off valve like this room is a disaster you have to hire a professional but he has but electrical nope. tape right and he can use that to <laughs> fix the <laughs> do you think they felt pressure out of the gate to make this just better like in the first 30 yes. seconds like it has to be better than rides again i i'm assuming he had less money than rides again but, but better i think well better spent better yeah. spent rides again was shot in vancouver right yeah yes. um this was also shot in vancouver with both films you click around on the imdb list you're gonna see all sorts of names that were in x files and are still working today because <laughs> they just live in vancouver to to go to casting calls and show up and stuff. people who are like in Smallville as teachers. Years exactly. Later. Yeah. 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 But uh, rides again. Just I, I think they just didn't understand how to make the movie there. And it was too they big of a script for the budget they had. They had it, 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 the, absolutely their, their forces were spread too thin. They had to spend like probably I'm gonna guess like four million dollars, five million dollars to do this big chase action movie, mm -hmm. and it just shows like none of the movie had enough money. This movie feels tailored around. Well, we know we can. We can take over a high school. We can shoot during it's the cheap. summer. Yep. We can get all these extras. We can get an actual local football team to do yep. the football shoot, sequences. You can shoot at night and just put lights in the windows to emulate daytime. Yeah. Like so they're stupid. It's good yeah. budget optimization. Yeah. I also wonder how many of the kids from there, how many of the younger actors, because most of the actors in it are pretty young, mm -hmm. grew up knowing Ernest. 
Hmm. That they would have been happy to be in. This. Oh yeah, they probably were Maybe. watching like Ghost to Camp like five well, years earlier. I want to. I, I just want to bring up that Will Sasso is the only real person of note in this movie. Mad he TV. plays one of the bullies, and uh, he is pretty young looking, and he does a great job. He and whoever is playing his friend, they spend most of the movie just laughing their asses off at pranks they're pulling on Ernest. Yeah, I disagree that there's only one other person of note in this movie. There are two more people of note. Oh, sure. Linda Cash returns. Oh, yes. yes. And she's fantastic in it. Yep. And, of course, Bobby's back. Yay, Bobby's back, guys. Bobby's yeah, back. That, well, that made me happy. Like, it was good to see Bobby again. Ernest Trivia. This is the last movie Bobby is in. But he's he's no longer paired with, like, another, you know, like, a fat white guy. And <laughs> uh, this time he's with uh, his Gerta, sister his instead sister. of his brother. And she is from Germany. She mm-hmm. has a German accent. I think Bobby has a little German accent in the few lines he says, but we don't hear him say much. Yeah. I like Bobby in this movie. It made it feel more like a real earnest movie. Totally. Yes. Yeah. And he yeah. can blink. He yeah. can blink <laughs> he in this blink. movie. Yeah. yeah. So they're the science teachers at the school. And Ernest, you know, after his first day of school, he has a bunch of issues. He He's like missing his schedule because the bullies take it away from him. Uh, he has to get a hall pass from this... Cowboy? This scene deserves an Oscar, I think. (laughs) This was my absolute favorite scene in the movie. It's like out of Doug. It feels like an angel has visited him, but because it's Ernest, he sees the angel as a cowboy Yeah, for some reason. He would think they're cool. He likes John Wayne. Yeah, the end of the hall turns into like a Western set. They're still in the school, and this cowboy rides up, and you're like, what is this cowboy doing here? And he gets him a hall pass. And then uh, he fades out. Like a ghost. Never comes back. Never <laughs> comes back. His theme song, I think, kind of plays over the ending credits. Yeah. Wouldn't you think he'd come back at the end for any reason? Like when but Ernest is really down in the dumps, yeah. you thought he'd get like a pep talk from like his... It must. Oh, he learns that like that guy's the drama teacher or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Ernest has a real bad first day of school. Mm-hmm. Imagine Ernest trying to answer a question in class. You get the idea. You know, he... He gives it a shot. He gives it a shot, but he's really empty. He's he's pontificating and kind of running out the clock. He can talk. He can sound what he thinks like is smart. Yeah. So he's he, yeah. It was a math question. He's trying to like yeah. He's trying to find some technicality with like the production of oranges or something. Yeah. You know what I actually thought? Have you guys, as we already discussed, Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School? That when Ronnie Dangerfield is in a class run by a stuck up stuffed shirt with a with a bow tie and a hmm attitude about him of Mr. Warl, why don't you take this chalk and write on the board with it? A real Pendle Smythe. <laughs> a real Pendle Smythe. Well put. That uh Ronnie Dangerfield's character starts talking about the logistics of like greasing up the Teamster Union and ta- you know paying off mob guys and like real world problems he's encountered, which is sort of the joke of he knows how to do his job, but he doesn't actually have the college degree. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ernest is trying to do that when discussing like big rats and spiders and rot and <laughs> yeah. stuff with oranges is funny. It works. Yeah, he sure. also like sits on a tube of, of maybe glue. toothpaste. It's glue. I it's think glue. it's glue because stuff gets stuck to the teacher. That makes, yep. And uh, it's he know. just screws up. Ernest screws up. He screws up, but it's pretty effective screw ups in this movie. He has and, a good yeah. time in band class, though. He does. He and meets he has, the love of his life. I liked this segment of Ernest like, I really like daydreaming. The, the band class scenes are the two of them are probably my favorite parts of this movie. Um, because number one, I love Ernest giving love advice to a teenager. <laughs> yeah. The teenager's like, oh, I'm too nervous. He's like, oh, well, you know, these are your formative years. He gets a friend group in this movie. Yeah. Well, because all, all the yeah. kids know he's like 45. Yeah. <laughs> like they're all like everyone. And they're thinking like, oh, maybe he can buy us booze. I, I think th- I think the script is aware that the age discrepancy is odd. Mm-hmm. And that makes it even more of a bummer when he gets bullied by the football dickheads. Yeah. I love the fact that he's giving love advice to a teenager and then he immediately doesn't follow his own advice. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I what I thought was it's uh his, the character's name is Donald. He's just like he looks like he's going to be a nerd, but he doesn't really do anything nerdy in the movie. He's like two lines. He just yeah. has glasses. He's, but I mean, you think he's totally going to be like, "Oh, Ernest takes this kid under his wing and his th- this character's crush is going to be, you know, uh, the, the B thing plot. that he has to, the B plot." And then it immediately just gets shoved to the side and Ernest falls in love with this music teacher. I like that. Yeah. That's clever. This is the first time Ernest is giving an earnest soliloquy and someone just asks, should I be writing this down? Like, like, <laughs> like, like this sounds important. And maybe a teenager would be like, oh, this guy's really clever. That's why he hangs out with kids so much is because <laughs> the only people who knows he's not talking bullshit, you know? <laughs> so Ernest is going to get fired because he's not going to get through school, right? Yeah, this this jerk, the Axeman, 
the Axeman, wants to close their school to consolidate the whole school district's budget. Yep. And they go, no, but we're a great school. All of our seniors graduate and our football team is great and we're going to win the big game, which should not be how they determine funding, but yeah. it's a cartoon. It doesn't I, matter. I am glad they bring up the graduation rate because that is really important. Like 100% yeah. graduation rate is a great goal to have. Yes. Yeah. Ernest is going to get canned because he's not doing good in school. No. He gets real desperate. He does. And it kind of uh, culminates in the bullies. They get him real bad by lighting his hat on fire. <laughs> Jesus! They light his hat on fire. That's like that's like tugging on Superman's cape. Yeah, like, you don't do <laughs> that's that. That's his hat. He needs the hat. He needs and then they fucking throw a uh, like a heavy metal fire extinguisher at his head twice. Yeah, they they throw <laughs> it at him. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher, who's supposed to be the adult in this scenario, does nothing. Actually, if anything, she's angry at Ernest for being an on-fire distraction. Yeah. Get out yeah. of the way of that fire extinguisher. <laughs> but as fate would have it, uh, the two scientists, uh, Billy, Bobby, Bobby and Goethe, they come out of Ernest's locker because they have a secret uh, lab, like a little passage going back into a secret lab. They've been experimenting on a pig or something, and now they're ready to try a human subject. Because they can't afford a chimpanzee. Yes, yes they do. They do. Well, they, yeah, they do say that. Like, no, Ernest, we need you. We can't afford a chimpanzee. <laughs> so uh, they're, they're going to make him smarter. They have a chair that makes you smarter. They show a little x-ray of his brain that has the hat. It's like it's, it's like redneck cerebro. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good way to, yeah. It, uh, they, they tell him that when we use this machine, it's going to like supercharge your brain and make mm -hmm. you real smart for, let's say, 45 minutes because your brain's so small. Yeah, the, the charge doesn't last that long, but they strap him in. He does all sorts of like while they're, yeah. while they're zapping him, they're showing him stuff on a TV. It's like clockwork orange. It's like Nutty like. Professor meets Dark Man because there's like this time limit. He has to come back every like hour yeah. or two. Yeah. Recharge. Well, what it starts to feel like <laughs> is like he's taking some sort of performance enhancing drugs. Exactly. Yeah. 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 He's like, you know, he's, he's cheating. He's cheating a little bit. He has a new character. It's smart Ernest, as I've decided to call him. It's kind of uh, he's doing a it's like the smart gremlin from Gremlins 2 kind of voice. Uh, he, he has glasses that literally just appear on his face whenever he takes. He now is a tie. Yes. And it, he has they, a tie. they call attention to how it doesn't make sense editing wise. Yeah. He's, he's smart for a fleeting second when they first test the machine. Mm -hmm. And it's for like one shot. He's in a completely different costume. Yeah. It's very old school, like Dr. Otto. Yeah. Ernest. His vest is buttoned now. <gasps> yeah. He's, right. Yep. You dressed as him for the scared stupid. Episode. I was. Yeah. I was smart. I was Professor Ernest or smart Ernest for Halloween. <laughs> so no one got it. So now <laughs> Ernest is like cheating. He's using performance enhancement to do better in he school. Is, but the real problem is that smart Ernest is kind of a jerk. His hubris gets the better of him and he becomes an ass. He, yeah. He's, Ernest does the meanest thing you've ever seen him do. And it's, he condescends to the lunch server for eating ketchup yeah. on his meatloaf. Ernest P. Worrell is a man of the people. He's, he would yeah, never, this never. guy's giving him a lunch at a school cafeteria. He's eat, feeding a meatloaf, mm -hmm. and suddenly Ernest is this hoity-toity snob, which is yeah. not the he Ernest gets he, Yeah, he, he, he gets uppity because he doesn't have cilantro or something you, like that. You have to give yeah. him credit. We're at episode seven, seven, and they're still finding new things for Ernest to do. Sure. The new thing he's doing is being mean. And Holy it's, crap. It's, I mean, like, it's different from a uh, mean Ernest from uh, Goes to Jail, who's more of a criminal. This is a... Uh, well, that's like a different character. I mean, he could like roll up his sleeves, put a cigarette behind his ear and be like a biker Ernest. That was a Jim no. Barney acting. I mean, like oh, yeah. Ernest being mean is like, it's cool. Like it, it felt new. It's the character of Ernest. For the, and, si yeah. the, for the seventh episode, for the seventh movie we've watched, it's cool to see a new thing happen with this character. Yeah, this is a character who's never really intentionally sinned before. Yeah. He's only he's only ever messed up. He's he's he, a klutz. He's only ever screwed up. Yeah, but now he is. I mean, it's it's classic. Uh, it, it's a, like an after school special or something. You know, like he's got to learn his lesson. He kind of does. He he basically uses his new brain power to save the band at the school. Yes. Uh, to swoon the teacher, the new band Swo teacher, Miss Flugel. Yes. Is that her name? Miss Flugel. Yes. Yep. I really like the scene where he wins her over by playing all the instruments in the band because it's, it's so funny fun, yeah. in a completely different way that doesn't uh, negatively impact the tone of the rest of the movie. Whereas in Rides Again, yeah. there's all these different types of jokes, mm -hmm. styles of humor, and none of it really works. Like it, it ruins characterization. And this, you're afforded Ernest acting different because he's gone through the smart machine or whatever. Yeah. I think some of Jim Varney's funniest things are when the different characters are diegetic, when they make sense in the context. Context. He's smart Ernest for a reason. He went into the flowers for Algernon machine. Yeah. In Saves uh, Christmas, 
he dresses up as the uh, the faux crocodile hunter for a reason. He's yes. an animal wrangler to get the reindeer out. Yeah, he's committing treachery to help someone, and his version of it just involves, you know, disguises. Uh, in this movie, does he have any other characters that he does? He does some voices. Uh, he does a couple of cutaway things. He, he, talks the beginning. His, he talks like his old football coach. There's a lot of talk about Ernest playing football back in high school when he's called oh. Crazy Legs. And right. his Crazy Legs come into play later in probably the lamest joke in the movie, um, which is unfortunately the finale of the movie. He's won over Miss Flugel. He's turning into a jerk. Um, what stops the smart gravy train? It's the bullies. He is going to sit. Not only is he going to save the day at the big, big game, he's going to lead the band that now he is the band leader of. And have like yeah, the yeah. best production they've ever had. He goes to recharge, if you will. He goes in there, um, and around the corner, peek out uh, Will Sasso and fuck Chump Weasel. And <laughs> that night they Not sneak. Donkey lips. Yeah, no, and no. they um they don't show them sneaking into the lab afterwards that night. But the next time he goes down there, it's just trashed. That was their plan. They're just gonna wreck it. You know, they caught Ernest going into his locker and go, there's where he's getting yeah. seat. And That's they have no the motivation is. at all. They're not really jealous of him. Did he use his smarts to like make fun of them at some point? He threw the football back at them. Yes. Oh, that was oh, cool. Actually, yeah. Really cool shot. They just throw a football at him to be jerks and he catches it like the fucking Terminator. Yeah. <laughs> It's just fun to see Ernest not just like pissing himself. And there are scenes like that in this movie that go, you can feel the direct of VHS era bleeding into the style of these movies. The version of this movie I watched, it was just the Amazon Prime version. Yeah. Most of it looked fine. Some of it looked good even. But it's like whenever some complicated edit happened or like, you know, like a fast edit, anything that wasn't literally film cutting it got really interlaced. Did you notice this? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it looked, there was like compression artifacts in this that I haven't seen in decades. I think the movie was originally supposed to be in theaters, evidence being the end mm -hmm. of Rides Again, teasing it. Telling you, theaters everywhere, summer of 94. I think while they were filming this movie, they realized this is going direct to VHS. And I think they, the editing base they had access to and such got a little cheaper. Yeah. But again, they, they, you know, they, they, they did a good job min-maxing their money and their locations. Yeah, and yeah. There's only the, the scenes that I'm talking about that bum me out humor-wise. They're just like they're all borderline fart jokes. Sure. Like, yeah. like they're playing like goofy trombone music, and Jim Barney is just like the music is kind of a weak point. It's the same music team that's done the other movies. Mm. Yeah, the budget slash. They don't really have an orchestra to kind of like put a nice gloss on yeah. it. Yeah. If this movie, if this same exact movie had come out a few years ago and, and a few years prior and had just a little bit of a better gloss, I think it would have been one of the best Ernest movies, probably. It could have been up there with camp. Yeah. So Ernest can't be smart anymore. The, he lets the band down. The band plays terribly. It is a spectacular meltdown. Fireworks go awry. People light on fire. The cheerleaders are screaming. It's a pretty good gag where he gets hoisted up. By his cape. By the cape. And at this point, he's conditioned the band to just follow my lead. No yeah. When he yeah. has the confidence of his brain, he, you know, he instills it in them. Like, everything I do, you need to trust me. That's what a conductor's supposed to do. Yeah. The band is, like, mimicking his motions. And we've learned enough about the students that they're they're, they're kind of insecure and Ernest's their hero. Yeah. So, okay, just do what he does. We, so, <laughs> he ends up falling. He gets his head stuck in a tuba. Oh, this is the biggest bummer of the movie. I was I thought this was funny. It was funny, but, like, the, the, the wrap-up of this oh, scene. Oh, yeah. Where Ernest finally gets his head out of the tuba, sees how bad. There's fireworks everywhere. Everything is on fire. It's expensive. Like people are running and he looks around. He gets really sad, and he puts his head back, back in, in the, the tuba. tuba. <laughs> I, I wrote down like, oh, bummer. Yeah. Visual definition of defeat. Axwell, who has a stick up his ass, yeah. he's in the audience in this movie watching this like sad display, yeah. and he's laughing like a like a little <laughs> he kid. He can't wait to close a school. Yeah. He needs his popcorn. I mean, yeah. It made me like him a little more. I was like, you know, this is funny. Now he's that, watching the movie with me. So something happens here. Um, uh, I, 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 th this movie has an interesting relationship with uh, sexism where the football coach keeps referring to the, the guys on the team, the players as uh, ladies. ladies. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. Yeah. And then later on in the movie, when the big football game is one spoilers, half the players are like the girls from the band. Right. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Miss Flugel, I like that she's not like Jessica Rabbit or whatever. Well put. Um, but Ernest, after his low point, he goes and apologizes to Miss Flugel. Mm-hmm. And he says, quote, I'm sorry I'm me. And he leaves the room. She doesn't say anything. Screw her. That, like, come on. Like, you just let someone who, like, had, like, the worst meltdown of their life, this public community, how nice could she be if she doesn't even, like, I know it's for dramatic effect. They only have, like, 90 minutes, right? Right. But I come think on. They wanted, I, think, I think they just wanted to let that line hang because that line got me. It's a sad. Oh, it's very. Oh, yeah. God, yeah. Oh, it's good. It's it's very. It's definitely like the flowers. She's, yeah. Algernon. Yeah. No. No. She's she could have just said Ernest, and he's just he he honestly feels bad. He let her down. He let yeah. the, he let everyone down. They probably didn't realize like oh there is kind of a real movie here, so they didn't think of that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it made me dislike her a bit. There, like maybe maybe they did shoot the oh Ernest, and they just cut it because they, it, it right. definitely is more dramatic. But it, it, it might make a bit. Honestly, they may have like cut that, thinking it's a bigger deal when he actually like. Not even gets her per se at the end, but you know, but it gets to talk to her in a triumphant state. Yeah, the, the movie is really all about Ernest gaining confidence because they they establish he's not actually that much of an imbecile. Like, yeah, he does like the goofy Pratt fall humor with the uh, the vacuum and everything and the toilet and all, it's literally toilet humor. They they establish that he isn't like in, when he can't solve the math problem with the oranges or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's not saying stupid things. He's a very observant person. You know, he's more into like history and English. He loves the Ottomans. You know, sure that oh. comes up in multiple movies. He knows he, all sorts of stuff about war history. Yeah, in all of these movies. It's a recurring. Theme. He often gets his facts wrong <laughs> based on individuals, what films they're in, what characters they play, where these places took place. Yeah. But he does this for comedic effect. They're, yeah. they're always funny when he gets that stuff wrong. The kids kind of forgive him for being a, a chump. Yeah. And, uh, they, they, and they, they recognize it wasn't his fault. In some, well, it is. And but. they spring it on him. They give him like the, the hard pill to swallow that like, Ernest, you're in the same boat as us. You just have to study. Yes. Yeah. And I, I love that moment because Ernest is just like, ugh. <laughs> the studying's good when they're like asking him random questions any high schooler should know, mm-hmm. and like someone's like Abe Lincoln shooter, and the Ernest goes, uh, "Some guy with a gun." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of good jokes mixed in there. It's sort of it's like a callback to what again one of the things I've always loved about Ernest is even as he ages and he might have a few too many cigarettes offset that we're not seeing, <laughs> and we see some of the lines start to build up here, he can still look and emote like a child. Yeah, mm-hmm. that his fear of going back to school is legitimate down in your, like your heart goes cold. It's like a nightmare. Not, not back to school. There is a scene where he's walking by himself and like remembering all these like things that people have said to him and feeling bad. This movie has like pretty good lighting. We had a, this complaint with um with Rides, uh, Rides Again. Again. There's no real lighting I, to speak of. Yeah. Whereas this one had some great stylized lighting. Yeah, yeah. where like he'll be in 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 light and like the background will fade out or something. They'll have, well, light, they'll have lights off camera on a dolly moving with Varney. Yeah. Like it's, it's so he has consistent lighting while he's walking. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of it's it doesn't look like a real movie, but it looks like a really good made for TV movie. Yeah. If this had come out on the Disney Channel or something. I think it would be remembered pretty well. It'd be way, it's way better than any Disney Channel movie I've seen for sure. Like I, I when you actually go back and watch like the uh, Paper Brigade or Halloween sure. Town, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't, they don't hold water, right? Or Men in White on ABC, Mister Boogity, <laughs> Mister Boogity's okay. I think they got a, a school, a high school, a college, whatever, for a summer. So they were indoors, unlike Rides Again. They had control of the set. They could probably film at weird hours, like the lighting that comes in and out of the inconsequential cowboy segment was great. Yeah. You bought it. Yeah. yeah. Totally this Coke Sam's it. guy knows what he's doing. If I he's guess. real. All right. So Ernest, Ernest studies and he crams and there's the big test. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like a joke in this. So it's got this really oppressive uh, teacher, this woman who's just very strict. You haven't seen her before. Um, she kind of dresses up as a Nazi in one POV shot. One of a few Nazi jokes in right. this movie. Yeah. What was it? There's a papers, please. Earlier joke. when Ernest is having a panic attack about how bad his school is going. Earlier in the movie when Ernest is having a panic attack about how bad his classes are going, he hears the German science teachers say, papers, papers please. please. And yeah. <laughs> Regardless. <did> uh, <laughs> anyway, like, so a fly lands on Ernest's face and you see like two minutes of him like trying to get this fly out of here and... Uh, it's, you know, it's a whatever joke, but then the way they wrap it up is the, the teacher just kind of looms in from out of the frame and a green frog tongue shoots out of her mouth and she catches the fly. It's dumb, but I laughed out loud because I was not expecting it at all. What's crazier, the tongue or the cowboy? The tongue, because the cowboy could be all in Ernest's head. Mm-hmm. The Only tongue he sees happened. It. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ernest passes. He passes the test through, you know, hard work. He does hard it. Work. He do the yeah. work. Um, but then there's still the matter of the football game and all that shit. The so, band has to be good. Yeah, so he kind of like gets them together, right? The, the band plays okay, right? Well, look, Ernest teaches them a bunch of moves, and it's Ernest without the need for the brain cerebro thing. Exactly. And, it's uh, the real Ernest. Mm-hmm. Yep, and there's some weird subplot about the football coach getting blackmailed. Who cares? The uh, the kids that Ernest is, fr- uh, is friends with gas the, the football team. Yep. I just realized that we have the German scientists gas a bunch of people. Oh, God. Yeah. Continue. Well, they all get knocked out, and like four of these kids kind of... Re- I mean, there's more than four kids, but for for the moment, I was like, how are they going to take over the football team? They put on the the uniforms, and... They got crazy legs. Yeah, they got Ernest. Ernest, Ernest is going to play legs. football. Without kinda, pads on. Yeah. In his mid-40s. <laughs> It's against weird. eighteen year olds, but they do a bunch of pranks. Kind of, they 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 try to defeat them with the pranks. It's they, the lamest stuff in the movie. Yeah, they they have the band play a waltz and they do the old trantor move again. But ultimately, it doesn't work. They're not able to claw back their you know the, their losses. And at the last moment, um, the uh, the Germans, the the Germans. I mean, the scientists, uh, Bobby. Bobby and Goethe. Uh, Bobby and Gerda show up and they have a portable version of the brain ray and they're like, come here, Ernest, you suck. You need it. Just don't be a jerk. That's literally a line. They're just like, don't be so mean. Yeah, yeah, don't be like that. I don't think the movie needed this. I don't think we needed to bring back the smart machine. Yeah, it's weird. The smart machine was done. Because the analogy, like the obvious analogy is that it's cheating at the best or like drugs at the worst. enhancing something. Or not being yourself. The message is like, Ernest, get back on the drugs. And by the way, also... The whole team also. Get all the kids on board with you. Messed up. Because they set up earlier that Ernest was a good football player, or at least like was like an unpredictable football player with the crazy legs thing. I think they bring it up like two more times. It's earlier. right there. I don't know what problem this sol- this solves. I think they just thought it was funnier to have the machines and the Germans come back. Maybe they realized that like Linda Cash was really funny to watch. Well, the the yeah. problem they solve is unfortunately due to preposterous cartoon logic. If they don't win this game against against a better team, the school will get closed. They have to win to keep their school alive. Which is why don't they just win the then? Why didn't why didn't why a, wasn't it written so that they just yeah. use the their yeah. pluckiness? It's, and, it's, it's like whenever someone defends a scene in a movie that they like the movie but they hate the scene, mm-hmm. you have to point out to them, like, okay, this isn't a documentary. Someone wrote this, you mm-hmm. know, like, so why doesn't Ernest just like win? Because we, it's been the, pl- the seed was planted several times that he was a football player. Sure. But what this does is it creates another last minute problem where Ernest does not get enough juice and it runs out while he's out there on the field and he has to get out of the situation again. He ends up running on a bass drum and then he has to like, he, the ball goes flying and he has to like crawl really flat, fast. He has to use his crazy legs. I, I guess that's what that was. I I think they realized crazy. It's just him like, crawling in fast motion. It's it's, it's, a, it's crab walking. It's like out of the Exorcist, the sterile <laughs> thing. Because I I didn't realize that they were implying that uh, that wasn't my take. That Ernest was a good good, if not at least competent football player. I thought it was just Ernest misremembering the coach calling him crazy. <laughs> that the coach didn't like him. Maybe I I think they they totally had a simpler, better script. Maybe they just thought it was funner to look at, and they said go full on kids humor, just bring mm-hmm. back the crazy science. There's not even like any good visual effects when they use the helmet on the football. No, field. it's just like. A, a broom or something they like put over their head yeah, basically the, the mobile version they bring out in the field in the daylight it's not a cool problem not near, yeah. no nothing compared to like the Dr. Otto room we saw before so a big a big mark in the negative column for the ending here yeah not doesn't live up to the rest of the movie but they win and Ernest gets his job back he does and the school gets to stay open everything's good and we do get a coda which some of the other movies kind of lack yeah he and Flugel are getting back together it's yep. implied that they're Actually, going to date, which Ernest never gets to do. Never gets no. the girl. And uh, oh, no. I, I did laugh at the final joke, which is he's building her a music box, and you're like, oh, that's sweet. Ernest is using his craftiness, but then you're like, wait a minute, everything he builds goes haywire. And, and as it's soon as he, in the hand yeah, yeah, he thing. opens it up, and there's a little ballerina in it, and it starts spinning. She starts spinning around really fast, and I was laughing, and it goes crazy, and he has to like take the motor out and eat it. 
it's the same r- crazy motor that was in the the vacuum. At the yeah, yeah, they yeah. did. Yeah, the, the, the motor joke, but. which is weird because like that joke too is just like a wet fart for me. Like, <laughs> all right, like Jim Varney's gonna put something in his mouth. Like when he spat the motor out earlier in the movie when he was trying to s- disable the vacuum. It just why did he put it in his mouth? Why did he spit it out? I was kind of hoping he would chew it around and by like crazy like you know gum and duct tape logic that is Ernest Universe. He, like he chews it enough and it comes out playing like. Uh, playing like Swan Lake. That would have been you really know, funny. That's funny. That would have been really good. Or the it's song he heard in his head when he fantasized about her. The right yeah. tool been, for yeah. the right job, yeah. which is his mouth chewing nonsense. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the end of the movie. And uh, there's one more scene we totally forgot to talk about. Oh. When Ernest wrestles. Okay. That was. <laughs> yeah, we kind of. There's no point to this. I love that scene. Because Ernest is asked to wrestle in phys ed, and he thinks it's unfair for a grown man to wrestle teenagers. Yes. And the, the first coach we've met, the one who's a bit sexist, yes. says, oh, okay. Coach we, Carson. Uh, yeah. We got another. We got an adult who can yeah, wrestle the you. The other one. Yeah. And it's just coach. this. Yeah. This guy like cut, bursts out, and he's already dressed like a wrestler, <laughs> and he's just awesome. screaming. He has a mask <laughs> like a luchador. <laughs> It's funny because like Ernest is like clearly scared, but he's hyped up his wrestling ability by referencing WWE matches and like Hulk Hogan matches. And oh, he says WWF, and back oh, then it was oh, still WWF. Please, yes. The only reason I like this scene is because of that entrance. Yeah. And when uh, J- uh, when Ernest goes to bite the buckle of the ring to show how tough he is, and he ends up spitting out some teeth. Yes. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. That's like yeah. that's like one of the better bits in the movie. I feel like me. this was in the movie because they did a little market research and they're like, oh, all of the Ernest fans are also WWF fans. <laughs> <laughs> a, our Venn diagram is not a Venn diagram. It's, no. just, it's just complete crossover. It's an Ernest-shaped circle. That, that Hulkamania line from Ernest Scared Stupid got a lot of laughs. Reference it again. Do the same joke. I felt a little weird about the wrestling scene. And it's because there are very few people of color in this film and of them we meet an older african-american woman who is on the school board and part of the people making decisions Mm -hmm. who's also a history teacher uh yep uh and but of the african-americans that we meet in this film other than background people or members of the crowd or just just you know extras just extras yeah two of them the wrestler and a football player on the other team at the very end of the game are screaming angry like as if they presented as words. like boss as, villains for Ernest, kind of. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. Presented in, I would say, a not particularly in, in a downright dehumanizing light. It, 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 it part of it's probably the talent pool of Canada, and the other part is totally like, yeah. I, I, I would feel different if, because uh, yeah. when I first saw the big wrestler came out, you know, he, as a ridiculous character wrestler, I thought, oh, I mean, he happens to be black. Is that a big deal? And then everyone, will, every person watching him, like, like tear him apart like an animal is a white guy. Every person. I, I could see it. I could see it bugging someone. I, I've had, uh, there have been other things that have bothered me more with race in the movies so far. Um, but yet again, I've never thought there was any malice or like, like the filmmakers putting their hands above their eyes and ears, like no, 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 whatever, it's just fun. Like I, I thought, I thought it was in good. Faith. They might have just found a local wrestler. That's on, it right. Been, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's probably just that they weren't mindful. Yeah, kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. It, it just feels it, it's such a crazy moment. I, I enjoyed it. No, it's pretty funny. Yeah. Every episode of Ernest Roulette, starting with our last one, we take questions from our patrons over at GuaranteedVideo.com. Neil, what questions do you have today from the Ernest Roulette fandom? So Joe Shuttle asks, what big Hollywood films would have been better with Ernest? Example, any of the Terminator films after the second one. <laughs> Hashtag Ernest Saves John Connor. Good title. Ernest. That was fantastic. What's this guy's yeah. name? Uh, Joe Shuttle. Thank you, Mr. Shuttle. Ernest protecting John Connor in Terminator 2 would be pretty goddamn good. Because <laughs> he'd be he gets the thumbs up. The T-1000 versus Ernest. <laughs> but by movie logic... Ernest has to win. Yes. <laughs> so like the T-1000 has to like slip on banana peels and shit. Um, and it turns into liquid metal and Ernest goes, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> uh, Independence Day. Ooh. Would he be replacing a character? Would he be replacing Randy Quaid's character? Or would he be an, his own oh, entity? Actually, Jeff Goldblum's dad. <laughs> that's a really good point, because if he replaces Randy Quaid, that's kind of like a no lateral real game. Move, yeah. yeah, yeah, lateral move. Mm. I don't think it has to be from when he was alive. Yeah, but it makes it easier. <laughs> 
like the fly. Do you really want him in the fly? Ooh. <laughs> Speaking of you, yeah. there'd be a lot of Vern shots in that. Hey, Vern, look what else <laughs> fell out. <laughs> Ain't that something? <laughs> Guess I've been drinking too much mellow yellow. <laughs> My first thought would be that he is in the third live action Ninja Turtles film, Turtles in Time. And nope, that's the game, not the film. No, but it's, it? it's, it's basically Turtles in Time. Right. Uh, but he's Casey Jones. We, we mentioned this before. Cullen Brothers movies would fit him well. Yes. And he wouldn't even have to, I mean, he would tone it down per se, but he could know that like all jokes aside, he could actually work in that universe. I think almost any Coen Brothers movie would. Jim Varney could do it. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, brother, where art thou with Jim Varney playing anybody? Anybody. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be, that would rule. I've got it. Yeah. <laughs> any Tremors sequel. Yeah. Ooh. There you go. Next question. Uh, Palm Palmerman asks, if you were charged with creating a new film franchise about a modern day TV commercial character, who would you pick and what would the first three films be? Not the Gecko from Geico, oh, not, not Flo. Flo. Terry Crews' character from the Spice, <laughs> from the old Spice commercials. They made Idiocracy, Neil. Have you seen that movie? I still haven't seen Idiocracy because too many fucking people have talked about it. It hits a nail on the head. But yeah, just Terry Crews screaming. <laughs> and well, in those commercials, he's basically like a weird cyborg, right? Yeah. He's always like having weird, crazy body shit happening. It's so like just like some insane Inspector Gadget RoboCop thing with Terry Crews, and like he needs to use Old Spice to like get his power. Can you imagine RoboCop with Terry Crews, and he doesn't look like a robot until like his pack opens up and like a hand comes out for some reason. I love picturing the criminals that killed him. Like you know when RoboCop comes back and like is getting vengeance by like killing all the guys that got him. Can you imagine like them, like the look of fear on their faces when they're cornered by Terry Crews? Like he's not a robot. He's not tin. Yeah. He's like in like red underwear, like <laughs> cornering them in an alleyway. And they're like, oh God, it's they're Terry like, Crews. What's he going to do? What's going to happen? Is his <laughs> neck going to get really long or something? <laughs> not only is he back from the dead, yeah. he's dressed like this and he's screaming. <laughs> so like the naming convention yeah. is Terry Crews blank. What would it be? Like Terry Crews fights uh, the pirates. Yeah. <laughs> Like modern day Hong Kong yeah, pirates, yeah. like <laughs> sure, <laughs> like from Somalia and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Captain Terry Crews, that's that one. One of the three movies has to be the scary one. Yes. So is it a haunted so the house? The first one is him just fighting stuff. I think the second one has to be more family. It's got to be holiday based. Yeah. So I'm I'm thinking like Terry Crews meets a leprechaun. Why not? Okay. Okay. And the leprechaun is played by Gerard Butler, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. CG. Yeah, with they just voice. make him small. They don't even make him green. Or so, anything. what's the spooky one though? The spooky one would have to be Terry Crews, um, Mummy. I'm thinking. No, I'm thinking it's like more of like it's a one man show. He's on a spaceship. It's kind of Event Horizon, uh, but he's like losing his mind, and you're not sure whether he's really doing all this crazy body stuff. <laughs> That's the third movie? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, so, the, that's the Halloween one though. Yeah, it's Terry Crews in the darkness of space. <laughs> Alone in a spaceship screaming. <laughs> Every now and then cut to the exterior of the ship, and even though there's no sound in space, yeah. you just hear his voice echoing <laughs> off the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So every episode of Ernest Roulette ends with us ranking the world filmography. We are now at episode seven. We've watched our seventh movie, Ernest Goes to School. Neil has devised a system for how to merit, a meritorious base of how to rank these films. We all pick favorites. Yep. And we all come up with our own individual lists. And then we basically just average them out and see where the list is after we take in everyone's opinion. And what's the ranking as of the start of this episode? Jail and Scared Stupid are tied for number one, and then it goes Christmas, Dr. Uh, Dr. Otto, and uh, goes to camp, and then in last place is Ernest Rides Again. So starting from the bottom up, mm -hmm. do we all agree that Ernest Goes to School is better than Ernest Rides Again? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah? Like, mm -hmm. without question, right? Yes. Why, yeah. why is it without question? Better production value, better film stock, um, better cohesive narrative. This, this has a, there's a reason these events happen. We don't wait like 19 minutes and change to find out crown jewels are hidden in a giant cannon. It's, we have to save the school, and the only way to do it is Ernest. Yeah, there's no like Mr. Bill, everything's just, the Ernest character works better. It's better than Ernest Rides Again. Do we think it's better than Ernest Goes to Camp? Is that the next? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna get tricky. This is tough, because in a lot yeah. of ways, it's, I think in a lot of ways this is equal. 
Yeah, they're very different beasts. Very. Similar I, subject matter. And I think of it now, I think of school in a more positive light because this is such an upturn after Rides Again. Mm -hmm. That it made me feel good about Ernest again when I didn't feel so good before. The biggest problem with this movie versus camp is that Ernest goes to school, they bring back out the brain machine at a really bad time. Mm -hmm. uh, it really hurts the soul of the movie when the movie could have probably reached the Ernest Saves Christmas, Ernest Goes to Camp Heights of, oh, this fits the Ernest character, he's growing. Right. So it really hurts the ending of this movie. It is more entertaining than camp, probably. It's, it's probably not as good as camp for me. I, I, would I think I'm going to agree because I've said this before. Camp gets better towards the end. It comes together. Um, and this movie kind of falters at the end, despite mm -hmm. having uh, plenty of good jokes and gags and, uh, you know, filmmaking for, for what it is, really. This movie is kind of being graded on its own curve, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, it benefits heavily from following Ernest Rides again. Mm -hmm. uh, I really dislike the children in camp. And the children in this film are young adults in high school who have f functions and actually help Ernest. Yeah. Um, and they are occasionally pretty funny. Occasionally. The, the goofy scenes, like his dream sequence or like teaching the band, uh, I find those scenes funnier than... Um, yeah, I, I'm... All right. It's higher than camp for me. Hmm. I think we have to go to the point system. <laughs> and we're back. Neil... You've done the math. Mm -hmm. What is our official ranking of the Ernest filmography as of episode seven? I'm glad you asked, Kevin. The ranking is Goes to Jail and Scared Stupid are tied for first place, followed by uh, Saves Christmas, Dr. Otto, and then Camp. And then right under Camp, we've got uh, Goes to School. And then in last place, it's Rides Again. We'll be back in two weeks to spin the wheel and fi Fuck, I always fuck this part up. We'll be back in two weeks to spin the roulette wheel. Is it roulette? We call it the roulette wheel? Yeah. We will return in two weeks to spin the wheel to figure out which Ernest film we'll watch next. I keep fucking up. And there you have it. We'll return in two weeks to spin the roulette wheel. Fuck. Roulette wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. And there you have it. In two weeks, we'll return to spin the wheel to find out what Ernest film we'll watch next. Goes to Splash Mountain. That doesn't count. It's oh, just the okay, end of the right.